series of teaching about the idols and the evil altars in our soul. This, some of you, it will be very controversial because, hey, born again ako, paano pa ako magkakaroon ng idols? Second question, hey, born again ako, may spirit na ako, paano magkakaroon ng altar ang evil sa aking kaluluwa? Yan ang ating pag-aaralan sa umagin ito. Kahit tayo, kristyano na, narakakaranas pa rin tayo ng mga behavior na hindi dapat natin ginagawa. Di ba? We call it weakness. But actually, that is, sabi ni Jesus, that is something that you have in common with the devil. In John chapter 14, verse 30, sabi ni Jesus, the devil is here, but he has nothing in me. Or, I have nothing in common with him. That's why he cannot control me. So yun ang ibig sabihin ng Panginoon. As long as the enemy has something in common with us, we are giving the enemy a legal right to intervene our life. Remember, our soul can be a property of the enemy. Because the Bible says our souls are territories. Spirit, soul, and bodies are territories. But nung tayo na born again, our spirit become one with the Lord. That's why the enemy cannot touch your spirit. And the only thing that he can touch is your soul. That's why di ba sabi ni Jesus, pag yung sang spirit ay umalis sa tao, babalik siya, may kasamang pito. And, and the person become worse than ever. Why? He has eight more, seven more spirit that is in him. So we gone through a lot of ano ba tawag don? Deliverance, di ba? Heal inner healing. Pero mapapansin natin, it always coming back. One month, two months. Bakit bumabalik? Di ba? So. Last week, we talk about what are idols, de ba? Sinabi natin sa biblical terms, an idol is anything. It's a either a person or thing that you place, give first place above God. So pag idols can be anything. Or anyone that has captured your thoughts more than Jesus has. So yun ang ibig sabihin ng idols. So hindi pwedeng sabihin ng Christian na porque wala na siya yung mga bato at kahoy na sinasamba. He is already exempted from idols. Sa totoo lang, mas maraming idols ang sinasamba ng mga Christian ngayon. Idols are also things that in many different ways, this idol is still from you. What are the things that they can steal? He can steal wealth. He can steal your time. Di ba? Time stealers ang tawag sa kanila. Because they steal your time with the Lord. Sabi nung iba, eh, Old Testament siya eh. No. Katwiran pa nila, we are under grace, not under the law. It's a wrong assumption. Because in 1 John 5.21, Little children, keep yourself from idols, from anything that everything that would occupy the place in your heart due to God, from any sort of substitute for Him that would take first place in your life. That's the meaning of idolatry. So, in the 80s, when I was born again, it was very controversial that idolatry was that. Di ba? Kasi offended ang mga katoliko eh. But it is true. Sabi nga nila eh, di naman kami sumasamba dyan sa mga bato na yan. But the fact is, the first commandment is this. When you make, pag gumawa ka pa lang, you already broke the first commandment. Kaso ginawa ng katoliko, tinanggal nila yun. 
And I'm talking to the church today, to the Christians, born again believers. Today's born again believers is worshiping idols more than ever. I'm not exempted to that. Lahat po tayo. And how do we know that we are exempted from the idols? It is when the Holy Spirit tells you that He has searched you and found no idols. That is the day that you are set free from idols. But until the Holy Spirit is telling you something in your life, we are still in the journey, mga kapatid. There are things that take our attentions. That's why the only way you can deal with these idols is only in the courts of heaven. So, ano yung mga idols sa pinag-usapan na natin last time? The idols, sabi ng Bible, ay Psalm 135 verse 16, Idols have mouth, but they speak not. Eyes they have, but they see not. Basically, the idols or the spirit behind, behind the idols, they are deaf, dumb, blind, and crippled. Kaya kung mapapansin mo si Jesus, yung mga may sakit na bulag, pipi, bingi, di ba? Nadideliver niya by casting out these demons. These are spirit behind the idols. Example, si Bartimaeus. Yung kanyang tatay, si Timaeus, is what? An idol worshiper. That's why yung influence ng idols napunta dun sa kanyang anak. Oh, eh ang idols ay ano? Blind. That's why yung anak niya, blind. So most of our sickness are what? Uh, it is because of the spirit behind the idol that their forefather has. Nakuha niyo po. So, next. Even food can be an idol. Mga kapatid, food can be an idol. Kaya nung sa Jerusalem Council in Acts chapter 15, sabi ni Apostle James, Kasi yung mga party of the party are contesting. Sabi nila, no, no, yung mga gentiles na born again, they still have to follow the Mosiak law. Ano sabi ni, ano? I think four or five lang yung sinabi ni, ni James. And one of those is what? Food offered to idols. You have to abstain. Food offered to idols. Eh, ang, mga, ang Pilipinas is maraming holiday. Kasi piyesta. Hmm. At marami mga Pilipino ay gustong-gustong mamiesta. At hindi nila alam, when they partake into that fiesta, they're eating food offered to idols. And that give the enemy, the spirit, a legal right to mess your life. Nakuha niyo po. Kaya sabi ng 1 Corinthians 17, Do not be worshiper of false god. As some of them, it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink. Because altar means stable. And idols want food to be sacrificed to them. Kaya tingnan mo ang Hindu, ang Hinduism, Buddhism, meron silang mga ano, sinasacrifice sa pagkain. Nakawin niyo po. Yung mga piyesa, that is a sacrifice. Yung mga pagkain na hinahanda nila, whether the intention is to feed the visitors, that is what? Food offered to idols. Next, ito pinakamabigat, idols of reasons. Nung si Paul ay pumunta sa Athens, he reasoned and argued in the synagogue with the Jews and those who worship there and in the marketplace where the assemblies are held day after day with any who chance to be there. So yung mga Greeks, gusto gusto nila yung reasoning. And they want to hear new things. And when, they, when Paul is there and explaining about the resurrection of Jesus Christ, sabi niya, bago ito ah. And this is the problem, these idols of reason, is affecting us. Oh, ulitin ko po. I'll give you an example. Tights na lang. How many members of the church 
who faithfully give their tithes to the Lord. Ang sabi ng survey, there are only 20% who are faithful. Not all, but there are some exemptions. 20% lang. Why? Reason. One is, sabi niya, kung yung 100% ng sweldo ko hindi ikasya, ano pa ang mararating ng 90% kung babawas ako ng 10%? Di ba? Yun yung kadalasa na issue And madalas, sa, kaya ang Holy Spirit hindi makamove sa congregations is because of this idol of reason. Kaya ang sabi ng Lord, you walk by the Spirit. You walk by faith. Idols of reason is the opposite of that is faith. Nakuha niyo po? Yung pananampalatig kasi tayo, to see is to believe. But the Bible is, believe first and you will See. Kaya yung iba ayaw makinig sa pastor kasi ano, hindi man mag-eloquent teacher yan. Eh. Kaya palipat-lipat ng simbahan naghahanap na pastor na um, makapag-satisfy ng kanyang reason. Remember, brethren, the word of God is a spirit and it gives life. You need to receive the word of God by your spirit, not by reason, not by your brain. Because our mind is enmity against God. Next idols that we have discussed last week is the idol of philosophy. And one of the philosophy is the democracy. The voice of the majority, the voice of the people is the voice of God. No, it's wrong. But that is the philosophy na itinuro sa atin. Kaya sa simbahan, ngayon marami mga simbahan na denomination democratically run. Anong ibig ko sabihin? They vote for the pastor. They always, you know, vote for something. Uh, kailangan gawin natin ito. O sige, butuhan natin. Oh, mag they, can, they cannot do the what the Bible says, na, no, theocracy. God will put a leader and the leader is the one that God will use. So, itong philosophy na ito, nasa sistema na natin po. Kaya, ang Bible is a kingdom, not a democratic, not a democracy, I mean. That's why I called it demon crazy. Democracy is not kingdom. Because the kingdom mindset, it, it operates on what? It's a monarchy or a theocracy. There is a king. Eh tayo mga Pilipino walang idea ng ano ng kinatawag na theocracy or monarchy. Kasi lumaki tayo sa isang ano democratic environment na lagi pinagbobotohan we always divide the house. ba? Diba? So This idol of philosophy is what? It's, it's still in us until the Lord set us free from this kind of idols. Meron pa isa. I just forgot to write it down. The idols of sexual perversion. You can read it in Romans 1, 23-28. Yung perversion nila dyan, makikita mo na sabi ni Lord, they give them to, the, ano, to their last na yung mga babae nakikisama sa babae, lalaki sa lalaki. Why? Because of their idolatry. Homosexuality and other sexual sin is the result of idolatry. Nakuha niyo po. Why? They have idols in their soul. And their idol is the one that lead them to live in this kind of life. Kaya tingnan mo na lang sa atin. Uh, television. Magko-commercial ng alak. Remember nung kauna-unang commercial noon, di ba? Na nakita ko. Si Gloria Diaz, nakasakay sa kabayo. Ano yun? White horse ba yun? White horse. Na alak. Nakatupis. You see? They sexualized the, ano, the commercial. The TV ads. O kalendaryo. May mga pinopromote na something, 
ang model ay mga babae. You get the point? This is one of the greatest idols sa ating panahon. Sexual, idols of sexual perversion. Como na yan, accepted na yan ng society. Inoon ang mga bakla at tumboy nagtatago pa sa closet. Pero ngayon, they openly na kanilang kinakaladkad yung ganung bagay. Next is the idols that tickle the ear. What is this idol? In 2 Timothy 4, to 4 For the time is coming when will not tolerate sound and wholesome instruction but having ears itching for something pleasing and gratifying. They will gather to themselves one teacher after another to considerable number chosen to satisfy their own liking and to foster the errors they hold and will turn aside from hearing the truth and wander into myths and man-made fictions. Ito mapansin niyo sa simbahan. Maraming mga members ng church na nagcha-church hopping. Maraming mga born again nagcha-church hopping from one church to another church. Why? They're looking for something that you know, tickle their ears. They will not submit to their pastor. Kaya ako nung ako yung pastor pa sa Bicol, I have no interest with people who transfer from other church. Pag alam kong galing siya sa ibang simbahan, I tell the pastor. Isumbong ko sila sa pastor. Oh, pastor, yung miyembro mo, mukha may problema na andun sa akin nung linggo. Oh. Tapos sabihin ko siya, they can stay there as long as she wants. He wants or she wants. But I will never accept him as your as our members. Kasi miyembro mo yan eh. Hmm. And then I will encourage the person to go back. Kaya tandaan nyo, pag lumilipat-lipat yan, may problema yan. And most of the problem is this. Kaya ang prophecy ni Timothy, time is coming and this is now. People will not tolerate or endure sound and wholesome instructions. They will always be offended sa preaching ni pastor. At pag na-offend ka sa preaching ni pastor, ibig sabihin the idols is reacting in you. Di ba? So you have to check. Maring tama man si pastor, but the problem is your heart. Baka may idols doon. I'm not saying the pastor is always right. Maaring mali si pastor. But it's better to check. Di ba? Yeah, idols of sexual perversion and idols that tickle still. So what happens? So every time these idols invade our soul, every time we partake sin, it wounds our soul. Yun ang hindi natin alam. Na every time we partake sin, kasi ano sabi ng Bible, the wages of sin is death. May bayad po ang kasalanan. Every time you partake sin because sin is owned by the devil, you are giving the devil a legal right to, so that he can interfere in your life. Yun po ang kanyang uh, tawag yan. Yun ang kanyang ginagawa. Kaya sabi ng Bible, little children, keep yourself from idols. Because John knows the effect of these idols in us. It can wound your soul. In the Old Testament times, people built physical altars out of stone or wood. Di ba? Most si Abraham, when he met God and he went to the Canaan and he built an altar. Ano ma- ang altar na ito? It's, it's just a heap of stone. Bigang patong-patong na bato and he poured an oil and that is old, already an, al- an altar to the Lord. Nung si Moses naman pinagawa siya ng ano, tabernacle. Diba? That is an altar where the presence of God resides. Then those altars were dedicated to either God or the idols they serve. Hmm. Dinededicate nila yung altar na yun. Today, We erect these altars in our soul. Nakuha niyo po? 
hindi na kung hindi na bato or ano or a table or whatsoever or a structure it is primarily in our soul the soul not the spirit is the favorite hotel of idols why not spirit because it's already one with the lord hindi siya pwedeng mapakialam diyan hindi siya pwedeng makialam sa spirit because that is exclusively owned by god himself that is because your spirit man never chases after idols why he is already one with the lord and it is the soul is the one one thing for the idols once you are born again in christ your spirit man becomes one with god one spirit first corinthians 6:17 but the person is united to the lord become one spirit with him that's why a born again cannot be possessed by the spirit by the devil i mean he cannot be possessed why his spirit is what one with the lord hmm. however your soul is a different matter because it is not made of perfect when you get saved like the spirit that's why sa bible may binabanggit na sanctification sa bible may binabanggit na ano salvation of your soul why it is not like the spirit to the time born again become one with the lord and our soul is different you know why because in our soul naroon yung mind will and emotions we can still what make a choice the soul which is made of mind will and emotion is a very fragile thing kaya kinakailang ingatan ito the soul can literally get wounded through sin traumas we experience and ancestral bloodline iniquities so nasusugatan ang kaluluwa at kapag nagsugatan ang kaluluwa it is only normal for the soul to look to look for comfort kaya madalas kung naghahanap tayo ng mga bagay that could comfort us outside from god kaya nung unbeliever tayo naghahanap tayo ng mga bagay that would comfort us kaya yung mga addiction natin iba-ibang klase people are addicted to soft drinks yes hindi na nga umiinom ng alak pero mas matindi pa yung ano soft drinks di ba others are addicted to food because it's the food that gave them what a comfort every time na siya ay nag nag uh, nagwo-worry, nai-stress, ang takbuhan niya ay yung ano, yung pagkain. Other others are what? Uh, illegal drugs. Oh, di ba? Kasi yun nagbibigay ng ano, ng comfort sa kanya. Others are gambling. Uh, liquor. Oh, iba-iba. Other are sex. Oh, others are, you know, iba-ibang klasing ano, uh, bagay that would what? comfort us and the moment na doon tayo tumakbo aside from our god it becomes an idol and it become the moment it becomes an idol remember there is a spirit behind there is nothing wrong with eating food but if the food becomes an idol there will be a spirit behind that yun ang mabigat Isaiah 30 verse 26 the Lord binds up the heart of his people and heals their wound inflicted by him because of their sin see it sins can wound our soul these soul wounds will make you think wrong thoughts make bad decision and experience unhealthy emotions. Kaya may mga time na ano, nagagalit ka sa mga bagay na wala nang mga ano, katuturan. 'Di ba? So ano ang ano? Ano ang solusyon? You have to ano, you have to come to the Lord. Romans 7:20. Now if you do what I do not 
desire to do, it is no longer I doing it. It is not myself, the acts, but the sin which dwell in me, fixed and operating in my soul. See? Sabi ni Paul, may mga bagay akong gustong gawin, pero hindi ko, may mga bagay akong masama na ayaw kong gawin, pero yun ang aking nagagawa. May mga bagay naman na mabuti, pero hindi ko magawa. Bakit? Kasi, he is what? He is operating yung kanyang soul ay what? Wounded. Sinabi na ng, ng Bible na ano, yung kanyang kaluluwa ay ano, wounded. Are you experiencing that? There are things in your life na ayaw mong gawin, pero nagagawa mo? O, oh, isipin po natin. May mga gusto kang gawin, pero hindi mo magawa. It is because your soul is what? Wounded. And when your soul is wounded, it will always look for what? Comfort. At yung comfort na yon, pag hinanap mo, outside from God, that becomes an idol. In every idol, there is a spirit behind Once your soul is wounded by sin, you will start doing crazy things you don't want to do. Tama ba? Everybody nakakapag-relate? Oh. Lahat tayo. No one is exempted, including myself. Your soul can be your worst enemy until it gets healed by the grace and the mercy of Jesus Christ. And I tell you, your soul cannot be healed by just obeying the law. The only way your soul can be healed is only by the grace of God. You go to the court. Hebrews 4.16 Sin trauma. Sin, trauma, negative circumstances or life, many storms can also wound your inner man and cause confusions in your life. The inner man I'm talking here is not the spirit. I'm talking here your soul. Your soul can be wounded. And the result of that is what? Confusions. And Job is an excellent example. Mababasa nyo, 23 separate occasions. Job say things like this. My soul is vexed. My soul is bitter. My soul is poured out. All the while, lamenting over the tragedy he endured. So yun yung naranasan yan ni Job. Diba? Mamatayan ka na ng anak. Mawala pa yung kayamanan mo. Nagkaroon pa ng bukol o ng pigsa ang buong mong katawan. Matalang ang walang pigsa. Diba? Knowing this, it becomes clear why the soul and not the spirit is attracted to idols. It is the soul that is attracted. Your mind, will, and emotion is the one that is attracted to idols, not your spirit. Because your spirit is what? Perfected in Christ already. Your spirit never sin and can never be harmed by any crisis or the stress you face in life. Dumanas ka man ng anumang klaseng stressful situations, contradictions of life, Your spirit will never be influenced by those things because your spirit is one with the Lord. Once the soul is wounded, mga kapatid, it can cause you to have unhealthy desire for money. Di ba? Clothing, expensive cars, or whatever you've made into an idol. Yung iba, shopaholic, di ba? Ang tawag nila doon. Shopping ng shopping, pero yung mga shopping niya, di naman ginagamit at kinakain. Oh. Why do this happen? 
your wound soul actually is continually searching for something to comfort and is the pain you feel. Kaya tayo naghahanap ng idol is because your wound, your, your soul is wounded. And when your soul is wounded, automatically it will look for comfort. It's either person, power, uh, passion, uh, possession, I forgot the other one. Yun ang hahanapin mo. Bakit? Kasi yun yung makakapag-comfort ng iyong kaluluwa. Ang hindi nang natin naiunawaan, ang Diyos lang pala ang pwedeng mag-heal ng ating mga wounded soul. Unfortunately, idols will strongly assert that they are obvious cure for your misery. I-insist niya yan na, I have for you. Ito ang solusyon dyan sa misery na naranasan mo. First Peter 2.11 Beloved, I implore you as aliens and strangers and exile in this world to abstain from the sensual urges or the evil desire, the passion of your flesh, your lower nature that wage war against the soul. See, the idols are the one that wage war in your soul. Idols are the enemies of our soul. Kaya, huwag niyong isipin na porque wala na kayong bato at kahoy na sinasamba, mas marami pa rin tayo na sinasamba ngayon. The wounds in your soul will drive you to idols to find relief from your suffering. It is a normal thing. I'm telling you, it's a normal thing na laging yun ang ating inclinations. Kasi yun lang alam natin eh. Because your soul will always look for an idol eh. Kasi whether you like it or not, kung ipinanak tayo, our soul is wounded. Kahit hindi pa tayo nagkakasala because the sin of your forefathers run through your bloodline. Oh. And it always look for a relief from your suffering. You will always look for comfort. Hmm. Kaya nga, tandaan niyo po itong statement na ito. All needs are created by God so that you can find it from Him because He is our Father. All needs are created by God. And some of those negative things, God allows it so that you can find it from Him because He is the source of everything. He is your Father. This desire to self-medicate is the demonic doorway Satan uses to load you up with worthless idol. Madalas tayo mga tao, mag self-medicate pag may sakit, oh, Naalala ko tuloy si Jokoy. Kilala si Jokoy. Jokoy is a well-known uh, stand comedian sa Netflix. And Jokoy is a Pilipino. Nanay niya Pilipina, ang tatay niya Amerikano. And he's making fun of his mother. Yun ang ginagamit niyang platform sa kanyang stand-up comedian niya. At ang sabi niya, isa daw sa <laughs> ginagawa ng nanay niya, ay ano, <laughs> lahat na lang nasakit ay ginagamot ng Bigs Bay Purab. Kaya kumita yung Bigs Bay Purab na yan, ang haplos ng pagmamahal. Oh, sakit ng ulo, Bigs. Sakit ng dibdib, Bigs. Masakit yung pa, Bigs. Haplos lahat, hinahaplas na lang Bigs. Panoorin nyo si Jokoy, yan matatawa ka talaga. Sabi niya, that's how Filipino, sabi niya, self-medicate. <laughs> And Most of us Filipinos, dahil mahal ang doktor, we self-medicate. Di ba? Oh, okay lang kung matsempahin mo, tama yung iniinom mong ano, herbal. E paano kung ang, ang taas ng toxicity niyan, instead na gumaling ka, lalo ka nagasakit? Oh. 
And that self-medication, trying to heal yourself, is a doorway of Satan. To load you up and to offer you up with worthless idols. So to combat the emotions, others turn to food. Ano pa? Alcohol. Dope. To make feel better. Sex. Ano pa? Marami pang mga pinagkakaguluhan ang pinagpupinupuntahan ang mga tao. Even hindi lang things, even people. Hmm. You know Job? Why Job was accused in the courts of heaven and he suffered the consequences? Namatay yung kanyang anak. O nawala yung kanyang mga kayamanan. Because the enemy has a legal right over his life. And what is that legal right? He idolizes his children. Pansin ninyo, sa Job chapter 1, Every time na magparty ang anak niya, kinabukasan siya ang nag-o-offer ng sacrifice. Na natatakot siya na baka nasasalansang ng mga anak niya ang Diyos. Well, he's a, he's a godly parent, but he has to teach his children. Kaya pagdating ng Job chapter 3, anong sabi niya? Ang kinatatakutan ko ay nangyari na sa akin. And what is that kinatatakutan niya? Na yung anak niya ay mamatay. See? The same goes for those who watch porn and have adulterous affairs. Yung mga nalunod sa sabaw. Mm. Yung mga na, na... Alam niyo ba yung... May isang website. At ang pinakamaraming subscriber na go-open sa website na ito ay Pilipinas. Magtataka ka. Lalo nung pandemic, mas maraming... Why? Doon sila nakakaramdam ng ano, comfort. Kaya hindi mo mabiblame sila. Kaya tayo po mga tao, whether you are a believer or unbeliever, we have so many emotional hang-ups. Meron tayo mga ano, mga bagay na idols na nagpupuno ng pain sa ating mga puso. This outward sin are a sign something is wrong in their inner man. So most of them endured horrible situations like sexual molestation and those strategies left, left their soul wounded. Yung mga namolest siya, ano nangyari sa kanila? It left what? A, a wound in their soul. Yung mga bata na iniwan ng magulang o yung mga bata na lumaki na walang magulang, hindi man nila ginusto. Di ba? O yung mga nanay na nagkaroon ng anak na hindi man nila inaasahan na gano'n mangyayari, na iiwan sila ng boyfriend nila. Lumaki yung bata na ano, merong trauma or pain in their soul, in their soul. So what happens? Mapikita mo sa mga outward behavior nila that there was what? A wound in their souls. For some people, idols that bring comfort to their wounded soul is food, movies, social media, or television. There is nothing wrong with any of these activities until they become excessive and undermine your time with the Lord. There is nothing wrong with social media. There is nothing wrong with television or cell phone or food. But it becomes excessive and undermine your time with the Lord that becomes an idol. Pastors. Church become an idol. Paano ko na sabi? Ang concern lang niya yung simbahan, wala na siyang pakialam sa pamilya niya. Di ba? So when this happens, you must realize that your soul is wounded and is driving you to break the first commandment. And what is the first commandment? You shall have no other gods before me. 
And some pastors have turned their church into an idol. They neglect their family needs while worrying about their church weekly attendance and offering. Worry sila sa tithes and offering, pero wala naman siyang maibigay sa pamilya niya. They just want to make sure the church is the biggest and the most popular and the wealthiest in the region. Uh, diba? Most pastors are driven by what? Church growth. Dumami, magparami. Oh. E nung tinamaan tayo ng COVID, sa totoo lang na-expose yung ating mga idols during the time of COVID. Na-expose. Hmm. May kakilala pa, may alam pa nga ako na ano, tuwan-tuwan nung nagkaroon ng COVID at wala ng simbahan. Kasi ang sabi niya, sabi nung pastor sa akin eh, sabi ng mga miyembro niya, salamat at wala ng ano, simba at hindi na magtatikes. Can you imagine that? At may, may kasama pa akong pastor. For two years sa simbahan niya, walang na-retrench ng member ng church. Can you imagine that the protection of God? At hindi lang yon mas lalong lumaki yung kanilang tithes and offering during the COVID. How do you explain that? God is your provider. Idolatry has infected church leaders as well as their congregations. Now, the satisfaction of idol is only temporary. Yun ang madalas nating hindi maintindihan. When you are feeling down or even desperate, that you often eat to feel better or buy something to fix your feelings, di ba? Akala natin pag tayo ay kumain, mafi-fix na yung ating problem. Or pag tayo ay nanood ng sine, ayos na yung lahat. Hindi po. It was just the beginning that these things will become worse. Have you also taken note that though you may feel satisfied in the moment, the feeling soon fades away? Ganyan din. Drugs, anything. Oh, di ba yung iba? Naglalasing sila. Akala nila na pag sila'y nalasing, tapos na yung problema nila. No, pag, pag wala nung, ano mo, nung tama, nung alak, balik ulit naman yung problema. Oh, di ba? Panandalian lang yun. These are the cycles that you that your wounded soul and idols can be in. Can interrupt me. Cycle lang yun. Paulit-ulit. If you find yourself in a recurring cycle of inner pain, then medicating the pain with something or someone only to feel extremely discouraged when the band aid gets ripped off and then you are caught in a trap of idolatry. So, sandali lang yun. Hindi kain ka, kain ka. O, pagkatas mo kumain, nang sobra-sobra, nagutom ka uli, balik na naman uli ang iyong ano, pain. Di ba? The devil wants you, wants to use your desperate longing for comfort and fulfillment to ensnare you into a cruel cycle of idolatry and disappointment. So sinasamantala ni Satan ang iyong ano, longing for comfort. Rather than going to the courts of heaven, to the throne of grace of God, to find grace and mercy, you go to these idols. If you see destructive recurring behaviors taking place in your life, it is because your soul is wounded and has become an altar. Yun ang malala. If this idolatry keeps on repeating and repeating and repeating, your soul become an, an altar of this idol. Kaya, every time na darating yung mga bagay na yan, wala nang resistant. You always what? Give in. Because only God can fulfill His promises. People run to their idols for comfort when God's promises have not yet manifested in their life. Kasi sabi ni Lord, I will provide. Di ba pansinin niyo? If you need material resources, money, 
So instead of coming to God and believing that your God is the owner of a thousand he, uh, cattle and a thousand hills, he owns the gold and the silver, what do you do? You go to ano, Mumbai, at doon ka mag 5-6. Tama? Kahit, di ba, we always promise tomorrow eh. Sabi niya, ay punta ka sa kapitbahay, pangutang muna kasi ano, bukas bayara ka namin. Eh walang kasiguruhan yon. Kung ngayon nga wala ka, ma- wala ka maibigay, tomorrow pa ka? Tomorrow pa? Di ba? We always promise tomorrow na hindi po pwede. Oh. So anong nangyari? We run to this uh, false hope. Eh. Doon tayo tumatakbo. Alam niyo yung 5-6? Inutang niyo ng alas 5, babayaran niyo alas 6. Yan ang ibig sabihin nun. After prolonged periods of waiting for an answer, they turn into antidepressant. Di ba? There are people who have been praying for peace, talagang stress na stress sa buhay. At hindi dumarating, so what they do? Uh, pariseta ka na lang na antidepressant para makatulog ka. But actually, it is the idol the one that causing you para hindi ka makatulog. And the only way to defeat that idol, mga kapatid, is only you go to the court, to the throne of grace of God. Baka may legal right ang enemy sa buhay mo. Kaya kailangan mong pumunta ron. People tried everything in the natural. Like for example, to lose weight, but no success. O sige, mag-inom na lang tayo ng gamot. I know a ministry na nagkakandak, ang ministry niya is healing. I think it's uh, um, pangilina ng apilyedo. Yan, he has a healing ministry. And one time, may, nag, may nakita ko yung kanyang prayer in a congregation. May nag-testify ha. The Lord is healing you right now of your obesity. At ang sabi niya, please hold your pants. You know, instantly, he experienced a miracle of loose weight. Mabuti hawak niya yung pantalo niya dahil kung hindi, laglag yun. Kasi talagang lumiit yung kanyang, ano, yung kanyang chan. God can do that. A privileged few resort to spending thousands of pesos on surgery in a desperate attempt to get the result they crave. Di ba? Gusto sila magpapayat. Kasi overeating. And that overeating is caused by an idol. There is a spirit behind. The more we run to our idols to get answer for our problems, the more the solutions we will become. Pansin niyo po ang sarili niyo. Pag may problema kayo, saan kayo tumatakbo? To God or to your idols? Mga kapatid, tandaan niyo. God created those needs so that you can come to Him as your Father. Because as a Father, He is the source of everything, not these idols. Idols will never bring satisfaction they promise and they are powerless to fulfill your prayers. They are powerless. They cannot fulfill your prayers. Psalm 115 verse 5, They have mouths but do not speak, eyes but do not see. They have ears but do not hear, noses but do not smell. They have hands but do not feel, feet but do not walk. They do not make a sound in their throat. Those who make them become like them. So all who trust in them. Now on you po. And these idols are blind, uh, deaf, dumb, blind, and crippled. Kaya pag na, nakapag-establish ng altar sa kaluluwa mo, you experience the manifestation of these things. Ito yung mga personality nila. Idols cannot bring satisfaction to the pain in your soul. Nor can they answer your prayers and bring you a miracle manifestation. Mga kapatid, we have to realize this one. Most of us and most of the time, we always run to our idols rather than running to God. 
is now the time to assess and see for yourself. Go to the courts of heaven. Ask the witness, the Holy Spirit, Lord, is there any idol in my heart? Only God can do this. Every time you run to idols to fulfill your petitions, instead of waiting on God, you are inviting a demonic presence to delay your miracles even farther. Psalm 106, they serve their idols, which become a snare to them. Patibong. And they sacrifice their son and daughters to the demons. These idols are demons, mga kapatid. We have to realize that. Anything you make into an idol, be it possession or people, it will have a demonic presence that attach to it. Kaya hindi lang siya naka-attach doon sa mga idol sa mga bato o kahoy. Anything that you make an idol, either tao o bagay, there is a spirit behind on that idol. And if you continue patronizing that idols, your soul become an altar. John 14.30, ito yung explain ko sa inyo, sabi ni Jesus, I will not talk with you much more, for the prince or the evil genius ruler of the world is coming, and he has no claim on me, or in other words, he has nothing in common with me, there is nothing in me that belongs to him, and he has no power over me. Yan ang sabi ni Jesus, because there is no sin in, their li in his life. So the enemy has no power over him because he has nothing in common with him, with the devil. So every time the enemy has, we have something in common with him, the enemy has a legal right to oppress us and he has a legal right to stay and to build an altar in us, to tabernacle in us. Satan can only have power over you if you have something in common with him. If you have sinned by pursuing idols, then you have created a landing strip in your soul for the devil to execute his will in your life. That's why he messed you, even your spiritual gift. He messed your spiritual gift. Oh, read 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Ano sabi ni Paul? I'm telling you about this gift. Diba? About the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Let me read. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Anong sabi ni Paul? Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers, I do not want you to be un uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were led astray to mute idols, however you were led. Before talking about the gifts of the Spirit, he warned them that these idols can mess your spiritual gifts. Yeah, there's a lot of Christians that, wants to see the realm of the spirit they cannot see they want to hear the voice of god but they cannot hear the voice of god it might be they have an idols it might be a deaf idols that causes him not to hear the voice of god next let's review a little bit about the altar what is an altar an altar is a supernatural landing strip a power station, a consecrated place, a place of exchange where spirit, it's either God, angels, or demons, land. It is where humanity meets divinity. That's why the Lord required Abraham to build an altar. Because when you build an altar, this is the time you meet God in that altar. Remember Zechariah said when you offer before God, he is beside with an, uh, beside, with, oh, beside with the altar. And the angel of the Lord came out of the altar. Gabriel appeared to him besides the altar. So, dito po sa earth, ang ibinigay niyang ruler ay tao. Kaya sabi niya, let them rule. Let them take dominion. 
So, when God created man, He created the heavens, the earth, He has given it to man. So, without man, without the permission of man, the spirit being from the spirit realm cannot enter the earth. Pansin niyo po, may mga lugar na ang daming mga masasama. Patayan, bisyo, lahat. Why? Because there is no altar of God. Ang marami is altar of demons. Kaya di ba sabi ko sa inyo, halos lahat ng barangay nakapangalan sa santo. Maraming mga municipality nakadedicate sa mga santo. And these are demons. These idols are demons. Oh, kahit saan nga pumunta, may chapel sila. And what is that? That is an altar. Oh, if that is an altar of demons, what happens? It becomes what? A gateway of demons. So mas maraming mga demonic forces na andun sa isang lugar. Kaya makikita mo ito sa tao, nagmamanifest sa tao. Kaya nga inutusan ng Diyos ang mga Kristiyano na mag-build ng altar sa kanilang city. It might be a corporate altar or individual altar in every houses. O, kung mag-build tayo ng altar sa bawat houses, ano mangyayari? Mas maraming angel ang papasok sa lugar nyo. At the principle of the altar is this. There is no two opposing altars that can exist simultaneously in one place. The stronger altar prevail. So if you have the altar of God, the altar of the Lord will prevail and automatic magsasara yung altar ng demonyo. At pag nagsara yung altar ng demonyo, yung mga demonyo hindi na pwedeng pumasok sa teritoryo nyo. That's simple as that. The spiritual warfare that we know actually is a battle of altar. Your wounded soul is an altar. The altar of the enemy is uses to control and destroy every part of your life. There is what we call the law of dominion. The law of dominion means the spirit without physical bodies of dirt are illegal on earth. Because Psalm 116 verse 15 says, the heavens belong to God, but the earth he was given to man. So man has the legal right here on earth. So kahit yung demonyo na nalilang niya ang ang tao is still the earth is owned by God. Psalm 24, the earth is the Lord in the fullness thereof. He never surrendered the ownership of the earth even though God gave the devil a legal right. But still the devil has to ano, convince man to build him an altar. Kasi kapag wala siyang altar, hindi siya pwede makapasok. Lalo dito sa Pilipinas, can you imagine kung bawat kristyano mag-build ng altar sa mga houses? Understand this one, ha? altar is not a monument. Kasi yung iba, nagtatayo lang ng altar. Yung iba nga, naglagay lang ng mga bato eh. Altar na daw yon. No. An altar to be an altar, it needs a priest. And it needs a sacrifice. Sabi ng Bible, offer yourself as a living sacrifice. Ano isa sacrifice mo? Praise, thanksgiving, doing good. Read Hebrews chapter 12. Na andoon yung mga klase ng mga sacrifice na pwede mong ibigay sa Panginoon. So an altar remains a monument if there is no priest that is dedicating or offering a sacrifice. Nakuha niyo po. We have been bombarded with prophetic words. I remember Reverend Sado sabi niya, one time in a national prayer gathering, he prophesied, where is my altar? Spirit can take dominion on the earth unless they operate through human beings. Why people are oppressed? At sinong ginagamit ng mga demonyo na yan? Yung mga nasa gobyerno. Pagkatapos, yung mga kristyano ayaw mag-participate sa government. Makatwira nila, 
magkakauling daw yung ating mga kamay. Come on, that is religiosity. Government, kingdom of God is government. Kaya dito po sa Dabao, may kandidato po kaming Christian. I just found out two weeks ago. Kaya we are, uh, I'm doing a one-on-one -on -one, uh, teaching to him about the courts of heaven. And on March 31, magkakanda kami ng assembly meeting ng mga Melchizedek Christ sa Dabao. Isasubmit namin before the courts of heaven itong kandidato na ito. Who knows? Baka yun na kalooban ng Diyos. Kasi dito, pangalan mo lang na Duterte, sigurado ka di ka mga panya, mananalo ka. Oh. Pero, we don't know. God is the one that can appoint. Tama? Kaya sabi ko sa kapatid na yun, Pastor, Brad, answered prayer ka. Kasi matagal na namin pinagpipray. Kasi kung hindi, ay ako nga, tempted na ako na mag-file ng Certificate of Candidacy ng Mayor ng Davao City. Bakit? Kasi, nagpipray nga kayo ng righteous government, pero wala namang gusto mag-file ng candidacy. Kasi tandaan nyo, hindi pwedeng ilagay ni Lord ang sino man na pastor o sino man na Christian na maging mayor kung hindi siya magpa-file ng Certificate of Candidacy. It takes faith. Tama po? O kahit wala kang pera, ang meron ka lang pangalan mo at pangalan ng Diyos, pwede na yon. You can campaign. Kahit iisa ang poster mo, I tell you, pwede kang manalo. Oh. So the only way we have the right to operate through you is if you have wounded area in your soul that is common with them, with him. With them, I mean. So that's the only way the enemy can operate over your life kapag meron siyang in common with you. And what is that sin that is common with, with him? That's it. That is legal right. So what do you do? You go to the courts of heaven and make petitions na matanggal yung legal right niya sa'yo. Then and only then can they work devastation in your life and work destruction on the earth. Hanggat may altar sila sa isang lugar, hindi sila pwedeng pigilan ng Diyos. Bakit? Kasi ang tao ang nagbigay sa kanila ng authority. At sinabi na ng Diyos, let them. So hindi pwede makialam ang Diyos. Kaya hindi nyo pwedeng sabihin na, bahala na ang Diyos. Hmm. Hindi nyo pwedeng gawin yun. Because we have a responsibility. And our responsibility as believers to establish an altar. Because idols in the soul affect also your physical body. 3 John 2. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things, be in health, just as your soul prosper. See? If your soul is wounded, your body will be wounded. If your soul is prosperous, healed, your body is healed. Your soul allows demonic powers to attack your physical body. This includes demonic forces behind the idol, the idol you worship. Like for example, si Blind Bartimaeus, di ba? na yung pangalan ng kanyang tatay, Timaeus, ang ibig sabihin sa Greek, defile oneself with idols. Idolatry start when lust is birthed in your soul as we gaze upon a person and an object. So, paano na bibirth, na ipapanganak, yung idolatry is when we what? When we gaze upon a person or an object. What you focus, you become. What you worship, you become. Because the eyes is the windows of your soul. Whatever we behold, whether God or idol, it is what will imprint itself in our, your, in our inner man or soul. Kaya nga ayaw ni Lord na magkaroon ka ng idol. Ayaw ni Lord na magkakaroon ka ng ano, ng iba na ipofocus mo yung attention mo. Mark 9 is the story of a little boy afflicted by an idolat idolatrous spirit that made him deaf, dumb, and epileptic. 
And the child father pleaded saying, sabi niya, if you can do anything, have pity on us and help us. Nakiusap yung tatay kay Jesus. Anong sabi ni Jesus? If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Anong sagot ng tatay? Sabi ng tatay, okay, before that, di ba sabi ng tatay, help my unbelief. The word possible there in Greek is dinatos Nang ibig sabihin from Thayer's lexicon, it means strong in soul. So, kung babasahin mo, if you can believe, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believe. The word possible, is it means also strong in soul. <clears throat> so, Jesus was telling the father that the healing of his child was possible once the little boy's soul was healed by the anointing Jesus carried. So, kadalasan ng ating mga sakit is because of our soul is wounded. Kaya kinakailangan muna ano, gumaling ang kanyang kaluluwa. At ito mabigat. Idols in your bloodlines is carried in your soul. Kaya tinan mo yung bata na yon. Wala man yung ginawang kasalanan that warrants that kind of spirit. That's kind of demonic spirit. Even Bartimeo sa ipinanganak ng bulag. Anong kasalanan niya? It is the bloodline sin. It is carried in your soul, mga kapatid. Bloodline idols in your soul can cause you to be crippled in your physical body. Kaya may mga inborn na mga Bata na may mga ganyang sakit. The man in Lystra was impotent in his feet, being crippled from his mother's womb. And the word impotent here na ginamit is sa Greek ay adenatus, which has a root word, denatus, which means strong in soul. Oh, you see? His being impotent has something to do with his the situation of his soul. So this implies he was born with a wound in his soul passed down to him from his idol worshiping ancestor causing him to be born crippled. Kasi imagine yung bata palagi wala na may itong ginawa na kasalanan that, that warrants him to be possessed by this Death, dumb, and epileptic spirit. Wala. There is only one explanation. The bloodline sin. Soul wounds are generational. From third to fourth generation. And are often passed down to you while you are being formed in your mother's womb. What is the biblical truth on this? The word womb in Greek is koilia. It means a place where the fetus is conceived and nurtured until birth. According to Thayer's lexicon, it, it is also means the soul. The womb, it means the soul. Why would the word womb also mean the soul? Because when you are being formed in the womb, your inner man receives all the wounds and sins your ancestor had in their soul. Kaya di ba mga doktor, pag may sakit ka ang unang tanong, yung mga ninuno mo may mga ganyang mga sakit. Because they know that most of our sickness are hereditary. Namamana. I have a high blood sugar. Sabi ng nanay ko, ay, mana mo yan sa tatay mo. Kaya sabi niya one time nag-call, o ipadala mo na nga dito sa akin yung sobra mong asukal. Nasa Bicol kasi siya eh. Sabi, padala mo na nga sa akin, sobra mong asukal. Mahal dito asukal. Kung pwede nga lang eh. A wounded soul, mga kapatid, leads to food idols. They are doomed 
and their faith is eternal misery or perdition. Their God is their stomach, oh. their appetites, their sensuality, and they glory in their shame, siding with earthly things and being of their party. Philippians 3.19 It is your soul that allows demonic powers to drive you to last after junk foods and to overeat. We have so many junk foods today. Diba? So when we keep running to the devil's table to feast, it causes us to agree with the demonic spirit that are behind these food idols. And you become what? Addicted to food. You know, food is for us. We eat food for us to heal. It's our medicine. Aside from that, wala na yung ibang purpose yung food. It's only to heal your body. But more than that, if there is an excessive desire, di ba sabi niya, sabi ni Paul, all things are permissible but not all things are beneficial. 1 Corinthians 10, 19-20, that food offered to idols is anything or that an idol itself is a thing. No, I am suggesting that the pagan sacrifice that they offer to demons and not to God. See? Part ng kanilang pagsasacrifice is food. Because table, mga kapatid, that is the literal meaning of the word altar. Table. Bakit tayo nagpipray bago kumain? Alam niyo ba kung bakit dapat pinagpipray ang pag-guide? Ah. Sometimes ganito ang prayer natin. Lord, sanctify this food. <laughs> Mukhang theologically wrong. Ang sinasanctify lang ni Lord, yung ating kaluluwa, hindi yung pagkain. You ask, Lord, you cleanse this food. Why? Kasi pag niluto yan ng tao, na mayroong sama ng loob. Yeah, I'm not kidding. Nasubukan niyo ang kumain? Pagkatapos yung kumain, nagagalit kayo? Nahawa kayo ng tao nagluto ng pagkain na mayroong bitterness sa puso niya. Kaya di ba ang pagkain ay masarap kapag ang nagluluto ay walang sama ng loob at masaya? Oo. Oh. Kaya pinagpipray ang pagkain. Lord, anything if this food is offered to idols. Di ba? Ano yung halal? Halal food, a food that is what? Offered to idols. Pinipray yan ng mga imam. You get the point? So, that's why we pray for food. Because some of the food that we are that we ate, some of them are offered to idols. Not literally to the kahoy na idols or bato. Yung nagluluto, may sama ng loob. Kaya mapapansin nyo, pagkatapos mo kumain sa restaurant, masama na ang loob mo. Subukan nyo yan. Na hindi kayo magpray sa pagkain. Something may effect sa inyo, yung, pag, yung kinain nyo. Hmm, subukan nyo. Oh, subukan nyo magluto kayo ng galit kayo. Tapos pakain nyo sa anak nyo. Mamaya mag-aaway ang mga yan. Acts 15.29 That you abstain from what has been sacrificed to idols and from, the blo- and from blood and from what has been strangled and from sexual immorality. So ilan lang yun? Apat. So the Jerusalem, Jerusalem Council and sabi ni Apostle James abstain from sacrifice from to idols food that's been sacrificed to idols blood strangled animals and from sexual immorality. Apat lang. If you keep yourself from this, you will do well. You will be beautiful believers if you keep your soul from these things and you will be true and faithful to our Lord Jesus Christ. So when your soul is wounded, it will continuously look for comfort and satisfaction. Bakit tayo naghahanap? Why? Because your soul is wounded. 
Hindi ako magsasabi niyan. Ang Holy Spirit lang. Excessive eating and drinking is a sign of a wounded soul. Hindi ka makakain na walang coke. Your coke is an idol. No malilit pa yung mga bat, yung mga anak namin, hindi namin sila painom ng coke. Nung nag ano ba 'yon? 4 years old ata. O sige, pwede na mag-inom ng coke. Nung birthday niya, binilhan namin isang litro ng coke, doon namin nilagay yung kandila. Ay tonto ha yung bata. Oh. It's your soul that provides the in common. Yung soul mo ang nagbibigay ng in common. Di ba sabi ni Lord, I have nothing in common with Him. An in common ground, they need to control you and drive you to eat more. Now, how, we, how are we going to bind the strong man? Di ba sabi ng Bible, unless you bind the strong man, you cannot ransack the house. Why it is so important to us to know how many idols and demons, gods, your ancestor venerated going all the way back to Adam. Millions of idols yan. Eh, thank you, Rapa, tandaan yun. What would happen if you had to name them all individually as you prayed to break them off of your bloodline? Mukhang imposible yun, ha? Papangalanan mo yung idol nila. Oh. Ang hirap noon. Hanggang kay Adan? Oh. Hirap noon. Ha? It would take a lifetime and even more Mark 3.27 But no one can go into the strong man house and ransack his household goods right and left and seize them as plunder unless he first bind the strong man then indeed he may totally plunder his house. So ang key pala is you go to the strong man. Who is this strong man? One of the most powerful kingdom principles for capturing territory in the spirit world is the principle of binding the strong man. If you want to conquer a place, you don't have to go to the, all the demons in that place. You have to look for a strong man. Yung anay. You want to kill the anay, look for the anay queen. Tama? And when you kill the anay queen, all the anay is dead. By capturing the strong man, that's in power over them all, it automatic, automatically destroy the power of all lower rank demons. Nakuha niyo po ang strategy? Kaya, hindi niyo kinaka lang isa-isahin yung mga demonyo na yan. <laughs> Idolatry is one of the easiest sins to commit by all humans. Ito pinakamadaling kasalanan na nakagawa ng tao. And there are millions of idols on earth. Yet we can take out every one of these idols in one swoop by binding the strong man first. Pero kung isa-isahin mo, ah, hindi mo yan matatalo, abutin ka ng lifetime. And even eternity siguro. The Bible shows that there is a strong man over every idol on this planet. Alam yung pangalan niya? Assyrian king. Where did I get this name? From Isaiah 10. Sabi niya, for the Assyrian say, amplified version. For the Assyrian says, are not my officer all either subjugated kings or their equal? As my hand has reached to the kingdoms of the idols, which were unable to defend them, whose graven images were more to be feared and dreaded and more mighty than those Jerusalem and Samaria. Shall I not be able to do Jerusalem her images as I have done to Samaria her idols, says the Assyrian. She is referring to that strong man. Ang name niya sa Bible is what? Assyrian king. Jesus is called the king of kings. So here we see the Assyrian king making himself the demonic counterpart of the clay. If Jesus is the king of kings, this Assyrian king is the king of kings of the demons or the idols. In the dark realm, or in the kingdom of darkness, he is so powerful that he has other demons 
king subjected under his rule. So yan yung strong man. And that is proven through this statement that all other kingdoms, idols, were unable to defend themselves against his rule. Diba? So, sabi niya, whose graven images were more to be feared and dreaded and more mighty than those Jerusalem and of Samaria. Shall I not be able to do Jerusalem her images as I have done to Samaria and her idols? So this Assyrian king is the king of all demons. Okay? Assyria was named as early in Genesis 2.14 as an ancient spirit. So when you bind this strong man, all idols under him will have to bow down and retreat. Genesis 2, 14. And the name of the third river is Tigris, which flows east of Assyria. And the fourth river is the Euphrates. This Assyria is mentioned in Genesis. So the wounded soul, remember, is the landing strip for the, for the strongman spirit. So kung merong legal right ang enemy sa puso mo o sa yung soul, it becomes a landing strip. If your soul is wounded, it can land. So the word strongman here in Greek is iskerus, which means strong mighty. The one who has a strength of soul to sustain the attack of Satan. The one who has the strength of soul. Okay? So to bind and defeat the strong man, ibig sabihin, you must have a strength of soul. And if your soul is wounded, how can you fight the strong man? So as, you're, as you are healed in your inner man. Okay, di ba? He came to heal us. That's why sabi niya, in Hebrews chapter 4, read it in verse 12, that the word of God is ano, it can separate the soul and the spirit. As you are healed in your inner man or your soul, you will be able not only to resist his attack, but also to exercise spiritual authority over him to bind him and totally ransack all spirit in his house. So if you don't have a strong soul, you cannot oppose this king. Taluka. Isaiah 10, 18, the Lord will consume the glory of the Assyrians' forest and of his fruitful field, both soul and body, and it shall be as when a sick man finds a way or a standard bearer faints. The Lord makes it clear that he's going to demolish all the destruction this strong man planted in your life. Then Assyria's fruitful field lies where? In the soul. And in the body. And this demonic king, remember, get his legal right to attack you from the wounds and idolatry in your soul. So the good news is that when you become strong man by being healed in your inner man, then his power over you will be broken. Tinan nyo po, assess your life. Ano yung mga bisyo o mga bagay na na-overcome nyo na simulang na born again? Dati, nung kayo hindi pa born again, umiinom ako at naninigarilyo. Nung kayo na born again, the Lord just heal my soul on that area. Kahit amoy, ayoko na. Nakuha niyo? Why? I'm not addicted anymore to those things. But before, I'm addicted to those things. So ano nangyari? That part of your soul will becomes strong man. Kaya kahit may mga dumating na ganong mga temptations, hindi ka na magigib in. Because your soul has been what? Healed already. So where do we get the powers to heal your soul? Papaano pagagalingin ang iyong kaluluwa? Number one, is the blood of Jesus. For if with his weak conscience and his fears and semi-belief 
in the being he has so recently rejected he return to their shrines and take part in their feasts is it not likely that this will have an influence upon his mind and work on him to his own destruction and so defeat the very purpose of Christ's death which has to free our weak minds and soul and consciousness the blood of jesus set us free and according to this verse the very purpose of Christ's death was to free your soul from idols and the blood of jesus shed at the cross has the power to cleanse our wounded soul of every sin connected to worship of this demon gods that's the reason why we go to the court because even after we got born again nagkakasala pa rin tayo so anong gagawin mo sabi ni lord if you confess your sin he is just and faithful to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness in chapter 2 verse 1 sabi niya i'm telling you this thing so that you will not sin but if you sin you have an advocate in heaven the lord jesus christ an advocate means lawyer so every time we sin what we do we go to the court and present ourselves and plead the blood of the lamb for the healing of our soul dahil kung hindi natin gagawin yan the enemy can create an altar over your soul libitico 711 for the life of the flesh is in the blood and i have given it to you upon the altar to make atonement for your soul see in the old testament god uses blood animals and sprinkle it in the altar para ano to cover the sin of the people not only to cover but also what to make atonement for your soul for it is the blood that make atonement for your soul kaya tayo pumupunta sa korte and we plead the blood because even we got born again after we got born again nagkakasala pa rin tayo so how do we how do we deal with that sin we go to the court and plead the blood of the lamb In the ancient times God people sacrifice God's people sacrifice a spotless animal then put the blood on the altar for the Lord for their sin to atone for their sin because sin lives in the soul not in the spirit because our spirit is already secured it is already one with the Lord it cannot sin only the soul that sin So today your soul is an altar that either worship god or an idol kay ano sabi ng lord romans 8 offer yourself as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable which is your reasonable service kaya pag hangga hindi na nahihil yung soul nyo it becomes what an altar of demons So when you plead the blood of Jesus over the altar of your soul then it will be cleansed it with idolatrous worship. The blood will wipe out the record of idolatry in your history. Parang sa browser ninyo may mga history ng lahat ng binuksan ninyo. So if you delete that yung kache or the delete mo yon wala na. taking away the legal right those demonic powers have to torment and afflict you so wala na siyang right to afflict you kasi wala siyang legal right unlike job kahit si job ay righteous sabi ni lord he is a righteous man he shuns from evil pero hindi siya exempted doon saan sa atake ng kaaway bakit si job may legal right sa kanya wounded yung kanyang soul Next, communion. That's why we encourage you to do it as often as you can. Why? It brings healing to our soul. One of the most potent ways to partake of the cleansing power of the blood of the cross is participating in the Lord's Supper. We do it in remembrance of Him and what He accomplished on the cross of Calvary. First Corinthians eight says that the purpose of Christ's death was to set us free. to free our soul from idols so without partaking of communion you will not have total victory over these evil altars in your soul that's why you have part to partake it nako ano po yan yung purpose ng communion kaya if the bible you do it every day 
communion heals your soul. Hallelujah. Matthew 26, 27. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying, drink ye all of it. For it is my blood of the New Testament which is shed for the remissions of sin. You see, that's why you have to take it. Why? Prophetically, it heals your soul. So the word drink in Greek is pino. It means to receive into the soul what serves to repress, it, strengthen, and nourish it unto eternal life. Hallelujah. So when you drink the cup, the juice that represents the blood of Jesus, and it refreshes your soul. It heals your soul from where? From idolatry. From wounded souls. Does every time you partake of his cup, your soul gets refreshed in every place it's weary and then strengthened in every area that is wounded? Amen. It is also nourished in every area where it is weak. Through communion, your soul will become so strong that it won't run to any idols to comfort anymore. Nakuha niyo po? Pag nahil yung soul mo, you will not run over to idols looking for comfort. You will be satisfied with God. Di ba sabi ni David, one day with the Lord is better than a thousand days elsewhere. One thing have I desire is to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Remember, David is the most busiest man in the during the time. Why? He's a king. But he's still longing for what? The presence of God. Communion comes directly against the demon spirit that are driving you to drugs, alcohol, food addiction, and so forth. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Oh, di ba? He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believe on me shall never thirst. Kaya, partake communion every day. The word thirst is dip, dip sow. According to Thayer's lexicon, it means those who are said to thirst, who painfully feel their want of and eagerly long for those things which the soul is refreshed, supported, and strength. O see, yung thirst na binabanggit dyan, ang ibig sabihin ay yung naghahangi isa ng mga bagay na makapagpapalakas ng kanyang ano, kaluluwa. So when you partake the communion, it refreshes your soul. When your soul is strong, you will not run after idols. The wounded soul is continually hungry and thirsty and never able to quench their tears. They will never be satisfied by the things of this world. His body and blood will cause your soul to be totally refreshed, supported, and strengthened. You can apply this truth specifically to the idols in your soul that are driving your negative food habits and unhealthy weight gain. So anything that is uh, driving you crazy to the idols, you can use this one. Therefore, my dearly beloved, shun, keep clear away from, avoid by flight if needed be, any sort of idolatry. And then verse 16, the cup of blessing of wine at the Lord's Supper, upon which we ask God's blessing, does it not mean we participate in the share a fellowship in the blood of Christ, the bread which we break? Does it mean we participate in share a fellowship in the body of Christ? See? So we participate. We share with him. How do you break a fellowship that you have with demonic spirit that came from eating at their feast? Only by partaking in the Holy Communion. You participate in and share a fellowship in the blood and the body of Christ. Communion reverses the effect these demonic gods 
have on your soul. This includes your being loosed from the strong man behind it all, the king of Assyria. Communion even takes away those demonic hunger pains. Communion with the Lord, it takes that hunger pain. Kaya sabi na John 6.55, For my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. Isaiah 10.27, It shall be in that day that the burden of the Assyrian shall depart from your shoulders and his yoke from your neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of what? Fatness which prevent it from going around your neck. And then the last one is the Holy Spirit and the dunamis power. Acts 10.38, how God anointed and consecrated Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with the strength and ability and power. How he meant about doing good in particular, curing all who were harassed and oppressed by the power of the devil, for God was with him. The word power in Acts 10.38 means dunamis. It means the power to perform miracles and excellence of soul. See, dunamis is what? The excellence of soul. So a born again believer, you have an endless supply of soul healing power inside of you. You have the power of the Holy Spirit. So whatever you get angry, offended, or have gone through a trauma that wounded your soul, you can be healed by the Holy Spirit that is inside of you. You have a deposit. Dunamis, power in your spirit that can heal your soul. Dunamis is an anointing that God puts in you to help you break free of every demonic oppression, including that Assyrian king. Di ba sabi ng Bible, the anointing breaks the yoke of bondage. The yoke that is in us, oh, it breaks. Isaiah 10.27, it shall be in that day that the burden of the Assyrian shall depart from your shoulders and his yoke from your neck. The yoke. Yung nilalagay sa kalabaw. The truth in Isaiah is that this anointing breaks the yoke of the Assyrian king of your life. Whatever idol that is in them, that is in us, it can break it. Don't forget that dunamis make your soul excellent. So when the anointing heals your inner man, referring to the soul, then you will have nothing in you that is common with the Assyrian king and his army of idols so that they won't have any power over you. And the only way he has a power over you, this idol, is because you have something in common with them. And the only way for that something in common is you go to the court. Ephesians 3.16, May he grant you out of the richest, rich treasure of his glory to be strengthened and reinforced with mighty power in the inner man. The prayer of Paul that your inner man, your soul will be strengthened by the Holy Spirit himself in dwelling your innermost being and personality. You have a deposited power, a mighty power. And that is dunamis in Greek. He's not referring to your born-again spirit why? Because it is perfected in Christ and it needs no help. Instead, he's saying that the soul, your soul will be strengthened and reinforced in every area where it is weak through the action of the Holy Spirit. So this includes the healing of your inner man and making it resistant to the temptation of idolatry. That's why, like in our physical body, we have what we call immune system. So kahit anong bacteria pumasok dyan, if you have a strong immune system, hindi yan tatalab sa'yo. So anong ginawa ng mga pharmaceutical company? Gumawa sila ng mga temporary solution. Instead of three, uh, strengthening our immune system and allow the body to heal itself. Oh. Kaya, Mali yung pamamaraan nila. Even pag ng COVID, mali ang pamamaraan ng gobyerno. Oh. Lockdown ang kanilang ginawa. Light of Christ. John 8.12, again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. 
the light that stream from Jesus' radiance is not just there to make him look good. It is a power that can change and heal your soul. Look at Luke 11.34. Your eye is the lamp of your body. When your eye or your conscience is sound and fulfilling its office, your whole body is full of light. But when it is not sound, it is not fulfilling its office, your body is full of darkness. Be careful, therefore, that the light that is in you is not darkness. If your entire body is illuminated, having not, no part dark or in something in common with the devil, it will be wholly bright as when a lamp with its bright rays gives you light. The eye is the window to the soul. Your mind, will, and emotion is hold particular workplaces in your inner man and perform specific duties, mind, will, and emotion. Your mind was designed to rightly divide good thoughts from bad. Your healthy powers of reasoning and operate with a clean and creative imagination. The job of your will is to make the spirit-led decision instead of being directed and controlled by, your, by the pain of your soul. And the demons behind the idols connected to your soul. Your emotions were also created by God to be sound and at peace. So according to Jesus, every part of your soul will be sound and properly fulfilling its workplace when your whole body is filled with Christ's light. So Jesus' light is the power that heals anything in your soul that is in common with the idols. And strong men like the Assyrian king. Isaiah 10, 17. And the light of Israel shall become fire and his holy one a flame. And it will burn and devour. The Assyrian turns and briars in one day. The Lord will consume the glory of the Assyrian forest. And his fruitful field both soul and body. See? The light will the one that will consume every idols in our hearts. Notice the word light here is capitalized. That means it is Jesus and the light that rejects, rejects from him. That means that it is Jesus and the light rejects from him. The Lord judges the Assyrian. Fruit filled in your soul and a body by releasing the blazing light of his son to heal you. So his deliverance happened right after Jesus descended. Remember that? From Mount Transfiguration, yung bata na napopossess. Di ba? It was the light of Christ that delivers this child. Jesus' appearance changed in their presence and his face shone clear and bright light like the sun. And his clothing became as white as light and shiny cloud overshadowed him. Nung pagbaba nila sa bundok, the one, yung, may, yung epileptic, pinagaling ng Panginoon. Jesus had been overshadowed and filled with light from the presence of the Father. And I believe this facilitated the deliverance, deliverance of the child. And the Bible made a point of saying that the same light was still on Jesus as he healed the demon-possessed boy. Mark 9, sabi niya, when they saw Jesus returning from the Holy Mount, his face and person yet listening, and one of the throng replied to him, Teacher, I brought my son to you, for he is a dumb spirit. I encourage you to look up every scripture in the word, light, in it and daily. Decree it or declare it over yourself. The more you sit on the presence of Christ in worship and adoration of him and his word, the more his light will fill you. And the more his light will fill you, the more you are free from every demon God. That has, captive, that has captivated you. Amen. Today, we are going to pray. Ayo po ay malalangin sa oras na ito.
my Jesus to be in your soul. Holy Spirit, I now invite you to search my soul, my will, my mind. And judge every idol and evil altar that causes my soul to break the first commandment. I surrender every soul wound to you, Lord. For it is you who leads me beside the still waters and restore my soul. Lord Jesus, I'm asking you to cleanse my soul with your blood. To cleanse my soul of every sin of idolatry. To cleanse my soul of every evil altar that has been erected in my inner man. The Bible says it is the blood that atones for the soul. The Bible also declares that the blood cleanses my conscience. Thus, I declare the blood is cleansing my mind right now of all thoughts connected to idolatry. I declare the blood is cleansing my will so that it won't be controlled by evil thoughts. I declare the blood is also cleansing my emotion to severe them from the control of idols and evil thoughts. Lord Jesus, I'm asking you to also use your dunamis power according to Acts 10.38 to heal every wound in my soul that the devil uses to oppress me. I also declare Ephesians 3.16 over myself that my soul is being strengthened and reinforced by the mighty dunamis power through the Holy Spirit. Thus, I am being strengthened in every place that my soul has been wounded through trauma so that the devil, devil cannot use the pain of my trauma to drive me to idolatry. I also declare that mighty dynamic power is reinforcing my, reinforcing my soul to resist all temptation of idolatry. Finally, I declare that I am full of the life of Christ and that my will, mind, and emotion are sound and fulfilling their office because my whole body is full of this life. I release the light of Christ into any darkness in my soul that came from idolatry in Jesus' name. Because my soul is being healed, I declare that I will never again worship idols or set up evil altars in my life and the bloodline that are connected to, my, to any demon god that can cause me any kind of deafness in the natural and in the spirit. And I declare I will never again worship idols to set up evil altars in my life. The bloodline that are connected to any demon god that can cause me any kind of speech problem in the natural and in the spirit. Father, today, as we partake of communion, take this communion I do it in remembrance of you and your victory on the cross in the resurrection I declare that I drink this cup of your blood and eat your body my sins are forgiven and my soul is nourished and refreshed and strengthened I declare that as I eat your flesh and drink your food your blood I will never be hungry and thirsty thirsty for idols again I declare that I partake your supper at my that my not guilty burning from this court concerning breaking the first covenant will be sealed by the power and testimony of your blood, of your body and blood in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us now partake the bread. As we partake this juice that represent your blood, we are declaring that our soul is nourished, refreshed, and strengthened. 